And Stephen Wise joins us today to talk about all of this. Stephen, welcome to you. First question to you is, you're not arguing that the chimpanzees should be considered humans. You say rather they should be considered legal persons. What's the difference? A legal person is someone or some entity that has the capacity for legal right. It could be a corporation, it could be a human being, it could be a ship. And at one time, all humans were not legal persons. So when, when we had slavery, they, slaves were things and not, not persons. And there are other common law countries, uh, English-speaking countries, uh, who have dealt with the question of things that we might find unusual and said that they're legal persons. There's a Pakistani court that, that said that a mosque was a legal person. The Indian Supreme Court has held that the holy books of the Sikh religion is a legal person. And in 2012, the, uh, the Crown of New Zealand uh, entered into a treaty with its indigenous peoples, and they, they agreed that, that a river was a legal person. So legal person means that you count in a courtroom. You're not invisible to the judges. I would suspect that, that almost each and every time that you first bring up this subject to somebody, and probably also when you come into a judge's chambers in, in preparation of arguing this, I would suspect that the reaction is something along the lines of, yeah, wait a minute, animals? Persons? Really? Uh, yes, that is the reaction. And uh, in our briefs to the appellate courts, the very first paragraph is, is human being is not synonymous with legal persons. Now, we saw in, in the OPDOC, and, and this was fascinating to me, we, we saw at one point in time the numbers on the screen. Yes. And we, we saw the chimpanzee working the numbers on the screen, recalling the numbers that were shown to them beforehand. Part of what you're arguing, a big part of what you're arguing here, seems to rely on, on some type of science. Yes. What, what are you saying, and what are you relying on, and, and how has that been shown? Well, we're saying that if any entity, whether she's a chimpanzee or a human being, is autonomous, that should be enough to make her a legal person. To have what, do you, the capacity what do you mean by autonomous? Right. Someone who can self-determine, who isn't op operating by instinct, who can be like us, kind of think of how they want to live their lives, can think about the past, can plan for the future. But in order to, uh, in order to be able to demonstrate that to a court, we had to really canvas the world, and we found nine uh, experts in ape cognition, chimpanzee cognition, uh, from Japan, uh, from Germany, Sweden, England, Scotland, the U.S., all of whom together gave us 100 pages of affidavits showing how 50 years, the last 50 years of chimpanzee research on cognition, both in the wild and in captivity, they are autonomous beings. They they can determine their, their own lives. And so we say, look at Tommy, for example, who, who we saw staring at us in the cage. That's how we treat a human criminal who's committed the worst kind of offenses. We put them in solitary confinement in, in a cage. These beings have never harmed anyone, and yet they, they suffer the way we would suffer in a, in a cage in solitary confinement. If you're successful, in, in, in creating this designation for them as legal persons. What are you hoping to accomplish for them? Well, for those four chimpanzees on, on whose behalf we filed writs of habeas corpus, uh, we, we have arranged uh, for a sanctuary to take them all, and they would then live the rest of their lives amongst other chimpanzees. Uh, some of them are, would not live in a cage at all, and, and they would live on an island, for example, if they went to save the chimps in Fort, Fort Pierce, uh, Florida, and they would live like chimpanzees. Folks on the other side of this case have right. said, among other things, wait a minute, we have plenty of laws out there that are designed to protect the welfare of animals. Why do we need something more, especially when it's going to require this, this leap of faith to have the law say chimpanzees are the equivalent of legal persons? Well, you saw Tommy and the others uh, are in cages, and one of the things that we're demonstrating with our cases is that we're agreeing that none of these chimpanzees are being treated illegally. They're all being treated in accordance with law. And so the only thing that we can do is beg the courts to view them as legal persons, allow us to file a writ of habeas corpus, and protect their bodily liberty, allow them to be free from prison and go to a sanctuary. Because if we can't do that, 
we can't do anything. They're like doomed to spend the, to spend their lives in in cages the rest of their lives. I saw that one of the critics um, about what you're doing has said essentially, well, aren't you just saying let's substitute one form of captivity, maybe a nicer form of captivity for the form that they're in right now? Uh, not really. We we've, we've spent obviously spent a lot of time thinking about that, and so we have made arrangements to go to places like Save the Chimps and Fort Pierce. While we would prefer to take them to Africa, and we would if we could, uh, they would die. So we're taking them to the next best thing they could um, they could do. So it's a far cry from being imprisoned in a cage all by yourself to being with 25 other chimpanzees on an island in Florida. I would suspect that, that the courts and, and some of the judges involved might take a look at this, and they might not express this, but they might be thinking this, saying, isn't this a bit of a slippery slope? If we say yes to this, to legal personhood, where does that take us? Where do we end up? Is that a, a danger, do you think, in terms of what you're trying to do here? Well, whenever you bring something new, someone is going to make the so-called slippery slope argument. Uh, the, we, we don't really see it right now uh, in, in that we're saying that any entity who has autonomy, and right now the ones that we believe the science shows are the four species of great apes, chimpanzees, bonobos, orangutans, and gorillas, uh, the species of cetaceans, you know, orcas, dolphins, and whales, and also the um, African and Asian elephants. Those we think are autonomous beings. There may be some others. Uh, and so that's right now what we're arguing for, is that autonomous beings should be able to be legal persons. But we also have no doubt that, uh, that once we win our first cases, legislatures are going to jump in, there's going to be lawsuits that are going to be filed all over the place, and at that point, you know, who knows how, how the law changes. But it should change as public morality changes, as our experience changes, as scientific evidence um, accretes. So, so uh, it's, it's, it's not a bad thing sometimes to be on the, at least on the top part of a slippery slope. Last question for you. Uh, and I, I think the science is fascinating. And, and you see what they're doing on the screens and you get a sense from the affidavits, what the scientists are saying all about this. But how do you get past what is probably this sort of deep-seated emotional response to this argument. People saying, wait a minute, forever it has been people, humans, animals are animals. And the difference is that we as people have been invested with either you know, through, through evolution or divine creation, whatever you happen to believe in, we've been invested with a soul and, and the ability to think and to feel and to speak and to reason. And that's us and that's not animals. Well, the part that we could prove in court, have a court battle over, we can show that chimpanzees, for example, or orcas or elephants, you know, their, their cognitive abilities are not only extraordinary and show that they are autonomous, but they're, they're autonomous and cognitively advanced in, a, in the same way we are, so we can understand. Now, the issue around a soul, that's not something that should be in a courtroom because you can't prove we have one or we don't have one. It's really a religious idea. We have a separation of church and state, and, we, and it, we should keep it separated, and we should only allow into the courtroom those kinds of facts that either, either can be proven or not. Well, it is indeed a, a fascinating battle that's taking place. Stephen Wise, thanks for spending some time with us. We appreciate it. Thanks for it. having me. We'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye on what happens with this.